I'm gonna survive 100 days in the end, but not that end, this one. The glow up is real. I've added a ton of mods, adding a whole bunch of new biomes, new bosses, new challenges, and an upgraded ender dragon fight to cap off everything. And hey, if you like this adventure, then you'll probably like my new series, The Ultimate Survival Adventure. It's a new hardcore series where I'm taking out different bosses, trying to find a bunch of hidden eyes, and doing my best to survive in a world filled with dragons. It's not going well. So let's see if I'll survive, thrive, or fall into the void. Day one. Just start on an outer end island and hope for the best. They need to be very careful because of a single... Oh. Okay, there's already mutants. So you know how I said that this was a modded end? It's because there's all sorts of additional stuff, including mutant endermen and these big mouth endermen that will just attack. No eye contact necessary. They're just straight up stalkers. Flanked by dangerous mobs on both sides, I made my way through the end stone spikes directly in front of me, hoping that it would be far enough that I wasn't targeted, but there was one waiting here. Thankfully, there was water directly in front of me. And just like with a redditor, it's enough to keep the endermen away. God, that took so long. But lucky for me, there's enough life out here that I was able to get a few pieces of wood, convert that into some wooden tools, and start mining away looking for food, which is gonna be one of the biggest problems I have. This tower right here didn't have an entrance, so I used all of my planks to try to build my way up to the top of that, having to use all of the endstone and mining up block by block, finding a bunch of diamonds and some diamond gear. I'll take it. I'm gonna be kitted out right away. This is end game loot, even though it's day one. And if I'm gonna be sitting here mining endstone all the time, a wooden pick is not gonna cover it. Converting three of those diamonds into a diamond pickaxe, I started looking around on the mini map to see where I should go. Being distracted by all sorts of shiny blocks, I held one in my offhand so the ground would be a little bit more glowy, having to rely on chorus fruit to eat and getting a random teleport as a little side dish. There are more of those big mouth endermen that I was able to kill this time a little bit faster thanks to a wooden ax in my inventory, but I'm just trying to make my way off of this first islands towards anything really any sort of structure or anywhere that I can find food and I found a bunch of pedestals that I'm able to put items on top of mining and grabbing a little bit of endstone I can actually make that into a smelter as well but this is gonna be a battle of attrition right as it rolled over to day two I found a crashed airship of some kind here going in and digging my way inside finding it completely filled with endstone I was able to mine my way along the outer wall seeing that the chest were unfortunately completely empty, but there were some things like glowing blocks and some brewing stands that I figured could come in handy. They also held potions, so that's probably the only way I'm going to be able to heal, grabbing some of the anvils that were around here and other blocks that just might be useful for a potential base in the future. There's a dragon head. We got to take that. Look at me. Look at me. I'm the dragon now. We'll fight the dragon, probably as an end boss, because the dragon is way tougher than it is in vanilla Minecraft. But I'm seeing things like giant spheres with ancient debris embedded in the walls off in the distance, and using the healing potions to recover just the tiniest bit of health, I'm mining up some thalassium ore, which is potentially an iron replacement. So I spent some time just harvesting as much of that as I possibly could. I'm seeing just random things floating off in the distance, which I won't be able to get to until I have wings, and the big mouth endermen are my biggest problem right now, as even just one hit from them would be basically death, considering I have such little armor. But the problem I have is actually one of just base survival right now. My hunger is continuing to tick down, and you can starve to death in hardcore. So I need to find a way to fill my stomach, not just recover my hearts. I tried breaking basically any plant that I could find, bridging my way over towards a nearby island, where in one of the lakes, there's a few iridescent signs of life. Please be edible. I was able to kill both of those fish, putting down the furnace and using my wooden tools to cook them up to the point where I could actually survive. It wasn't up to full saturation, but at least I was no longer at risk of starving and knew how to get food in the future. As I was breaking down this tree right here though to replenish on all of my planks, I found out that it was partially occupied. Wait, is this just somebody's house? <laughs> it's just a library. In the middle of a tree. Is this one too? No. 
Why is that one a library? Oh, no! I found out that the big mouths don't actually teleport at all, which is a little weird, but maybe it's because their neck is snapped. They do still take damage in water though, so I'm able to just lure them in and let them basically kill themselves. I was wondering what that library was about, so I marked it for now, doing a little bit of pickaxe fishing in the lake right here, cooking up all of the fish, as well as killing a few jellyfish to get some gelatin that could be used for some more complex meals down the road. I also started smelting up all of the thalassium, which is really good because that's basically an iron replacement, which is going to be essential since I have no chance of getting iron here at the end. The only trick is crafting weapons with it is a far more intensive process than just sticking two ingots and a stick together. Oh, I'm gonna need a lot of it. First, I had to smelt up basically everything that I had. I spent the time while that was cooking, doing a little bit more fishing and getting a bit more food and blocks. Oh, hello. Are you friendly? Hello, friend. Hello, friends. No, I'm gonna leave you be. Once I started getting ingots, I made myself a bucket so I could have a bucket of water as a basic defense against generic endermen potentially. Then starting to look into how I can actually craft weapons. First, I made myself a smithing table using two of the ingots. Then I needed to make myself an anvil. Then I needed to make a hammer and other tools that I could take the ingots and smash those into plates. And then I was able to use those plates to craft up to finally make a sword. That is, uh way harder than just crafting an iron sword. Why is that so difficult? And the complexity continued as I made myself a full set of thalassium tools, which did allow me to do things like kill fish a little bit more efficiently, but it's really gonna take some time to pay off. As I left the lake, I found an ender pearl just sitting on a column right here and a slime, which was a nice new friend. Hello, friends. These end islands are far more lively, and it's gonna take some getting used to. Day four, I was doing just a bit of additional fishing in the lake right here, getting myself up to just a few snacks that I'd be able to survive, mining all the way up through a tree to get to one of the upper end islands, finding some purple ruins just embedded into the ground, and a whole bunch more, which led me towards my first end city. I need a shield. Thankfully, crafting a shield is just one-to-one -one replacement for iron, so that's really great. Heading into the very lower areas, shulkers are going to be a problem. Without real good armor here, without feather falling, without even a full set of armor, a shulker shot actually does a decent bit of damage. You wouldn't know it because you only ever interact with them in endgame. And getting myself trapped in the corner here, constantly pelted by those little spheres, was a bit of a problem. It cost me a few of my potions just to stay at full health, and I had to time my attacks to when the levitation would inevitably disappear for a few seconds before I was almost immediately hit again. And it was tricky. These cities, too, are a lot better. Better is kind of the key word of this 100 Days Adventure. And when I got to the very top, well, the rewards are a bit better, too. Hold up. Is this just... This is just... <laughs> These are just shulker boxes. Oh, this is awesome. So with four shulker boxes in my inventory on day five, I could actually organize a little bit. You're not gonna see the chest monster that you almost always see here. I can be organized from day one. That's really the only chance. Once a monster starts, there's nothing you can do to stop it. The tricky part of it though was clearing the side towers. I still had to deal with a whole bunch of shulker enemies and blocking all of those bursts with just one shield and half armor put me down to about three hearts a couple times. That was pretty dangerous. The tricky part here is just clearing the room. Once I was able to do that, I was able to loot the chest in here, getting an iron advancement, even though I'm in half diamond right now, but I can't take the ender chest because I don't have silk tie. Touch. So that's just gonna have to sit here waiting for me. I rode the water back down as I can't take that fall without feather falling, seeing another crashed airship in the distance, making my way inside and getting a whole bunch of healing potions, which I immediately organized into a little med kit box for myself. Leaving and marking that location, I stumbled onto something a little bit interesting. Okay, on eternal. 
Portal Lost for Eternity. K U G K Patreon. Did someone say Patreon? D H I. Okay. Right behind that portal, actually, was a house with a whole bunch of stuff in here. So I just kept looking around, grabbing an enchanting table, all of the books, the lanterns, barrels, anything that wasn't nailed down, and I thought could potentially be useful in decorating a base at some point in the future. There were more lakes here, populated with more fish, which was about to turn into more snacks, doing a bit of fishing and cooking so that I wouldn't starve to death. I grabbed a whole bunch of blocks and started converting some of that into charcoal, which I could use to have a more efficient fuel source. I also started digging my way up one of these trees using a bucket of water to do the vertical ascension and the blocks at the top having insta mine. Getting onto the cap of the mushroom tree right here, which is right underneath the end ship corresponding with this city. A quick little bit of pillaring up, dealing with quite a few shulkers in the condensed area, and I finally had access to some good loot. Yes. Pants. Efficiency four. But here's the good thing. Wait. Yes, here we go. I spent some time organizing everything, getting the wings on, and feeling a little bit more confident to deal with the shulkers on the deck of the ship, and that was not going well. <laughs> I was absolutely sent flying. Time to leave. Once the levitation wore off, I took that altitude and started gliding, flying out of that area, marking the ship location, and then just continuing to glide from biome to biome. Next up was this area with just these awesome bismuth kind of looking crystals, and then a red tinged area with a bunch of scrubland and plants all around. There's another crashed airship right here. So I went inside to check it out, finding a whole bunch more of the healing potions, which is one of the only ways I can really recover efficiently right now. But there is also a whole bunch of blocks, and you know me, I see pretty blocks, I start dismantling whatever structure I'm looking at that I could turn that into a home at some point in the future. I sailed over towards a more orangey-yellow biome that was filled with these kind of exhaust vents and sulfur crystals that were glowing on the blocks underneath the water. I broke a few because I thought they'd be important pocketing them, not realizing how critical they would be. Stay tuned for that. I took a detour around some jellyfish, finding a third crashed airship here, mining through the front of the ship and not finding any additional treasure, grabbing the potions and some aurora crystals from those glowing blocks. I realized you could dry the end lily leaves and thankfully to the JEI interface, I realized that was one of the only ways that you could make paper. And it was right here, see, I told you it wouldn't take long, that I realized that sulfur was essential to crafting gun powder. The other things I needed for that was charcoal and bone meal. Charcoal would be easy enough. You just cook some logs. Bone meal took a little bit of research and trying to find out what would be any potential way to get it. Once I had two thirds of the gunpowder recipe in my inventory, I just started running off in the area, going from vent to vent, trying to use those to give myself a little bit of altitude that I could fly, realizing that if I caught the smoke from the top of them, it gave me a little vertical boost on its own. I flew over to the next adjacent set of islands, which was this amber colored biome that had a ton of plants right here on the ground. They could theoretically be crafted into sugar as well, which would be great for some of the better recipes that I could use in this pack. But just over the sand dunes that were right here was a bunch of violacite, which was another just awesome looking block that I could use for construction. Oh, that's satisfying. But it does make the advancements come in kind of a weird order. <laughs> I have an elytra, I have a diamond helmet and pants, a diamond pickaxe. I don't have shoes yet, but uh, hey, stone age. I spent a bit of time harvesting the vitalocyte before checking out the neon cacti that was right here over the hill and they break in the most satisfying way. But I spent some time mining out and leveling a space that I'm thinking might work as a potential base location. We're gonna need a spot to call our own and just store everything because my inventory, even with three shulker boxes, is pretty, uh, it's, it's a mess already. 
This location was pretty flat, it was well illuminated from all of the neon cacti, and I didn't see any mobs spawning here when I flew up, which made me think it's pretty central to the area I'm going to be able to explore in the near future. Let's set up shop here. First thing I did was plant all of those amber plants that I had just collected, thinking, hoping that I'd be able to harvest them in some way to be able to get bone meal. After that, I dropped down all of the shulkers, picked up a few of the blocks, and then just started building a bit of a wall. I'm gonna go for a bit of a larger compound feel here. Instead of just one tiny little starter house, I wanna make a castle with a courtyard out in front of it, mainly out of end stone. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to build up something that is of the same scale of these massive end structures that are part of this mod pack, but a little place that I could hang my head and store my loot. After setting up a decently ambitious plot of land and walling that off to make it my own, I took to the hill directly in front of this house. Using that enchanted diamond shovel that I had gotten from the very first end ship that I had looted and just devastating the sand mountain directly in front of where I was planning to set down. This allowed me to access the amber biome directly in front of me a little bit easier and I mined until that broke. And here's where the chest monster kind of starts. I, I know I promised that it wasn't going to happen. I know I promised this wasn't going to be the case, but necessity begets organization. I dropped everything off in the barrels directly here, just trying to empty a few of the shulker boxes so that I could use that for remote looting, trying to see how I can make a thalassium shovel. And as always, it's a pretty complex process. But in the middle of that, I was visited by a new friend. Oh my god. <laughs> Hello, friend. What do you have? Haste! Blind... That doesn't help. Night vision, slow falling... A knockback stick. Opal infused totem of undying. How would I even get a totem? Well, that's a new goal. Bye, friends. That end goblin is gonna get me into some trouble. Just wait and see. But once I made myself my new tools, I harvested up all of my shulker boxes, dealt with another big mouth enderman, and found out a very terrifying fact of their attack pattern. Oh, they teleport you. Oh, that's terrifying. But with that handled, step one was to just get more wood so I could start building a house. While I was mining that up though, I did make a stunning realization, and you have to deal with it too. Oh, that doesn't decay, does it? That doesn't decay. I'm not fixing that. That can be a problem that you all can deal with when you get the world download. I am not. I refuse to fix that. I don't want to hear anything about floating trees in the comments, okay? I just, no, not allowed. I'll, I'll delete it. <laughs> <laughs> but I spent some time cooking a lot of that up into more charcoal, crafting some of the wood into slabs into composters, which I could then take and take all of the amber root seeds that I had collected and turning that into some bone meal via composting. I had hoped that the neon cacti would also be compostable, since regular cactus is, but turns out that's not the case. So I dropped everything that I could in, and I got a whole three pieces of bone meal to my name. So I crafted myself up some shears, thinking if I could take some of the other plants that were around here and compost them, they'd be a little bit more effective. Thankfully, they were. So I went and I grabbed all of the grass that I had from around here, all of the helix trees, replanted whatever I got as far as seeds, and then took all of the actual plants themselves, dumping them into a composter to get myself whatever additional bone meal I could. And the rates were not very forgiving. But thankfully, after about two days worth of work, I had something to show for it. Okay, so what we can do with this is paper, gunpowder, rockets. You love to see it so we can fly. I have to be very careful with that because none of that's renewable. Let's go here. And hope that there is fish. 
So yeah, I don't know if you noticed that, but I was actually on half hunger and had no way of refreshing it. Thankfully, the lake that was directly south of my home not only had these very interesting Menger sponges, which look like something out of, you know, non-liminal space, but it was also filled with a bunch of fish that I was able to sort up and be able to convert that into food. I made myself an extra smelter and got that started cooking, or was about to, when I noticed the house right here. Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Inside was some beetroot seeds and some iron pickaxes. It's the only time I'm going to be excited about beetroot, okay? Seeing two floating platforms nearby, I mainly focused on just trying to secure the bag when it came to food. There was this one giant enderman with a big purple beard that showed up. It looked like it was kind of crossed with an axolotl. I'm not sure, but it turns out it's not very friendly. Once I had figured out the food situation and I was no longer starving, I thought I needed a more reliable way to catch fish that didn't rely on them spawning. Thankfully, the house that I had just seen had three cobwebs inside, which was just enough to be able to craft up a fishing rod. You see, I'm a simple farmer over here in the Outer End Islands. We just keep things quiet. I just stand here and I go ahead and catch myself any of them little glowy buggers that I could turn into food. It might not be the most exciting footage that you're going to be able to see in this whole here 100 days, but it's honest work. It's making sure that I'm going to be able to put food on the table. Make sure I'm going to be able to get through this whole thing without starving. Okay, I'm sorry, but I just had that bit in my head and I couldn't get rid of it. Once the food situation had been taken care of though, it was time to check out what these floating platforms were about. I flew up to one and saw a whole bunch of ancient debris and Vex. Once I had done a loop that all of the Vex despawned, I went and I grabbed all of the debris from both platforms. Each of these was enough for a single netherite ingot. And that's gonna come in handy because I do need netherite in some of the upgrade paths for a Ternium in the better end mod. And I'm pretty sure that's why they're here. I spent more of day 14 just finishing collecting all of the ancient debris, doing a bit more sword fishing whenever anything was actually spawned into the world. But I made myself a few sets of shears and then just started giving the tree right here in the middle of the lake a bit of a crop top and just harvesting off the top few layers of leaves. I'm hoping all of this would be compostable so I could turn it into a whole bunch more bone meal so I could be able to get more rockets as bone meal is the thing that I am most throttled on right now as the sulfur crystals grow naturally and charcoal is a dime a dozen. I flew back home with about eight stacks of leaves which is all I got from a single set of shears converting absolutely all of that into bone meal while using some of the charcoal to dry up some of those sponges because I know, I just think it would be cool to have a sponge with a hole in the middle of it. But I was able to craft myself up a whole three extra gunpowder, which, yeah, it's not great. So I'm going to need to automate this whole process. I made a couple hoppers using the thalassium that I had here, setting up some barrels on the top and bottom, and I automated the whole process with the leaves. So I could just dump everything in the top, and it'll eventually convert and auto-collect into bone meal, so I don't need to just stand here all the time to get that working. While that was just cooking away, I crafted myself up a pair of diamond boots so that I was at least fully armored, if not enchanted, whatever base protection that will give me, flying off to the east to see what I could find in the biomes local to my home base. I'm trying to make every rocket count for as long as possible, so I'm allowing myself to descend pretty low, accelerating and gaining altitude only when I'm starting to come up on a set of islands, hoping that I'm not going to get stuck underneath one of them. I flew through a couple different biomes before seeing this abandoned house right on the border of this dark Shadowlands area. Flying in right through the window, I was able to deal with some shadows of servers past while finding a motherload of loot in the chest. I like that. I do like that. <laughs> there were end crystals, ender eyes, some ruined flavor flavorite? Flava fa flava light flavor light. Some ruined flavor blocks. Flava flavalite? I, I genuinely don't know how to pronounce it because I've only seen it written. 
Anyway, I think it's funny. I jumped all of that into a shulker box, heading to the bottom floor, finding an end stone smelter, which allows you to smelt two things together. It's basically an alloy forge of some kind. Flying off from there, I continued over a couple different biomes, turning a bit more north, so I had more of a circular area that was fully explored, finding a stray end ship. There was a lot of shulkers in here, and it took some doing to work my way down to the bottom and kill everything, sitting on half health, where I was able to finally get myself some additional tools and a backup elytra. There's a lot of tools in here that came pre-enchanted, some things that I could combine to get myself up to protection for armor, and shulkers that were randomly teleporting in and out whenever they felt like it. Oh, hello. <laughs> Goodbye. I headed out of here with a little shot in the butt from one of the shulkers to just remind me to leave. Sailing over towards this tower structure over in the distance. I mined in about halfway since I had levitation, kind of a tradition here in the end. The chests at the very top had a bunch of cobwebs around them, which was useful for string. A lot of end tier kind of loot, the stuff that you find in end cities. The roof was also partially made out of wool, so it allowed me to finally get another resource that I didn't know if I'd be able to find here in the end. But I'm running low on rockets. I only have three in my inventory at the time, so I flew back towards home, hoping I'd be able to convert a lot of the resources that I had into another round of rockets for another flight out, but also knowing that I'm gonna have to do more building here to set up the infrastructure to support these excursions. I tested a few of the different blocks that I had collected, seeing what was and what wasn't compostable from the tree around here in the better end and organized all of the loot that I had collected trying to just keep my head around what was good what was bad and what was just comical negative attack damage what <laughs> But I finally had enough end stone to fully complete the wall around the outer area. It did require a bit of terraforming in the back corner, throwing down a bunch of sand just to make a little bit of a hill instead of a hole. Don't make a joke about my house being built on pillars of sand. No, no. I used that to not only fill that one corner, but all of the other gaps around the area, leveling out the floor inside of the base build location so that I'd be able to put up a house here pretty easily. Breaking the neon cactus is always satisfying, but I figured they're a pretty good barrier, so I planted a ton of them around my home in every side, hoping that it would keep endermen away. I also used a bunch of trapdoors just to bring some purple accents into the walls throwing down slabs on top of it to get this nice crenellation pattern while still feeling pretty open to the overall terrain that I'm living in. It was by now that the composter was done and 21 pieces of bone meal very quickly became 21 pieces of gunpowder and a whole load of rockets. Since mobility had now been solved, I thought let's kind of investigate food a little bit better, making myself a cutting board and seeing what opportunities I had with N's delight to be able to get better food from coarse fruit or the occasional bit of fish. The only problem was these recipes basically relied on a lot of things that were from the overworld as main ingredients or at least components of almost every recipe, meaning that I had very limited options and food is basically always going to be a problem problem here in the end. So I thought, let's venture out. Maybe we can find some other things that would be useful. I started flying through to the southeast of where I was stationed, seeing a much larger end city off in the distance, approaching from the top this time, breaking my way through the windows here and getting to a two-tiered main top loot room. There's a ton of shulker spawners around here in a very confined space that once you have levitation, it's really annoying to navigate. So running around and breaking all of these is essential as I'm kind of relying on the levitation to get up to the top level to be able to then block off the hole underneath me, breaking the spawner and then securing the top loot room to be able to actually collect. And it didn't really go well. It took a few tries of killing all of the shulkers around here, mining down to the lower level to be able to collect the gold and other resources that were in those chests, including getting a few emeralds and other things that are a bit on the rarer side. There's this bright blue block right in the middle of this central pillar of the city, and I wanted to go down and get it, but not before I finished looting. Once I had packed basically everything, collecting all of the shulker boxes from around all of the spots, I did luck out into a looting fire sword, so that will help me collect food a lot more efficiently. There's quite a few times that I was actually levitated away from what I was trying to collect, where I kind of just had to hold my position for a few minutes, but once I went down to try to grab that block in the bottom of the tower, things got complicated. 
first I was just levitated up away from it that I was just it was completely a bust then I thought why don't I pearl down trying to break the spawners that are at the bottom of the chute here so we're not getting infinite shulker boxes the problem there was I was at half health and I'm taking a lot of hits and I'm getting hit before I can mine any of these spawners away so I just kind of mined through the wall tried to avoid getting hit by any of the levitation blasts whenever I could purling down to the roof of one of the nearby areas. I was really careful here trying to not take fall damage. As I don't have feather falling, I would go splat. So I downed a health potion and just flew away, trying to get enough distance that I wouldn't be attacked by an errant blast. Seriously? Once that resolved, I continued on land, seeing what else was on this island, connecting into a lake biome right nearby. And thankfully, I had a fire aspect sword, so all the fish was cooking as soon as I killed it. I didn't realize that in the moment. It was a little late at that night of recording, so I kept trying to cook the fish in the furnace, having no idea why it wasn't progressing until I realized it was pre-cooked on kill. I even thought maybe it was the jadeite furnace, so I flew all the way back home before I realized. Wait. Oh! <laughs> I'm an idiot. I forgot I had fire aspect. I just cooked it. I don't need to... Well, you know what? I'm just gonna leave that right there. I, I'm a dummy. With that brain fart basically behind me, I spent a little bit of time just organizing and depoting a lot of the things I had been collecting into chests here so I could have things organized and have the space in my somewhat limited shulker box storage, especially for non-stackable items, which is the main treasure that I get out of end cities. And I have a lot of treasure, just no food. It is very cool and very interesting to have a row of shulker boxes and only 20 fish to my name. Continuing this playthrough of basically contradictions, I need a lot more wood if I'm gonna start building out my house. I broke one of the trapdoors to figure out what it was, as I don't have these all named, and flew off to one of the more purple biomes to collect a lot of the wood that I could turn into more elements for my base. I had to craft up another ax as I had left all of the other axes back at home, and I just didn't have anything with me, chopping down most of a tree. There was a little bit of a floating tree situation here as well, but trees in this mod are just massive, like genuinely far too massive for just one sapling. It does not make sense, but I'm not gonna complain at the ability to get a whole bunch of resources pretty quickly. I harvested up some chorus fruit that I was able to have just a little bit of an alternative food source, converting a lot of the purple wood into planks, into trapdoors, which I was able to complete the decorations of the crenellations surrounding the overall compound that I want to live in. Once that was done, I spent a little bit of time moving chests around and organizing because it was time to get ready for construction proper. The next day, I'm still on terraforming duty, getting the last little bit in place and then taking some of the Vilocyte bricks to get a basic kind of footprint for the interior building, or at least the first of many that I'd like to build. I started to set up a little bit of a frame before very quickly running out of materials, instead taking the time since it was a little late at night at this point to just spend some time demolishing the mountain in front of my house. With unenchanted tools, I mean, the shovel is working really well, but when I go to mine anything with a pickaxe, it is slow and it's starting to get really annoying. So I'm thinking I should probably head out to try to find some enchanted tools. I flew over towards the end city that I had noped out on a couple days earlier, digging into the central tower at one of the midpoints, trying to very first get to that large blue diamond looking block in the middle, getting levitated all the way back up to the top of the tower, doing a second pass, getting hit just as it was about to break, thinking, let me try swimming down. Water counteracts levitation. You could swim down it, which allowed me to get to the bottom of the tower and start breaking a few spawners. This started to clear up the situation, well, kept it from getting worse, but still there are a ton of shulkers around here and I'm constantly being pushed against the ceiling. Ugh. This is frustrating. I broke the very top spawner, just stayed in a corner, pinned up in the ceiling, stuck there for a while, mining through the roof and then levitating and flying away, hoping that a lot of the shulkers will despawn while I have a few seconds to recoup and get a little bit more water so I'd be able to counteract the levitation that I'm being affected with. Once I had flown in, I actually got into the mid-level of that top section, realizing that there were yet another four more spawners that needed to be broken. These larger, 
more complex entities are a lot more of a challenge to be able to clear instead of just having to kill about five or ten and owning the building. But my persistence was definitely rewarded. That's what I needed. With a Silk Touch pickaxe, now I could use things like Ender Chests. I could collect some of the overgrown kind of biome specific versions of Endstone, thinking that that would allow me to plant crops and be able to harvest a lot more of these plants. And that wasn't the only really awesome find that I had. Ooh, sure that sword has knockback, but a lot of the mobs that I'm fighting are kind of rooted in place, so it's not really a problem. Plus additional looting means I'm getting shells more often and ender pearls and any other treasures. I did another run at the diamond block, getting levitated away. I tried again while underwater. I broke it, but was unable to pick it up. It fell down to the bottom of the tower where I had to break a whole bunch more spawners. When I was looking around for that block, I have no idea where it had gone. I rode the water all the way out to the very bottom of the tower and just didn't find it. It either disappeared or got hit by an errant shulker blast and was killed. I flew over to another nearby end city, breaking a few spawners right away, making sure to really hit those, getting some additional loot, an ender chest off of a pedestal, another set of wings, and a perfect pair of pants. I was collecting all of the potions so that I have almost a full shulker's worth. That'll come in handy whenever I get into a little bit more of an intense combat situation. At this point, it's really just trying to get the resources that I want. I flew over to the top of this tower, digging in, breaking the spawners right away, and then breaking blocks from the outer columns to be able to block the interior 3x3 space so I could loot this area uninterrupted. I was able to get an efficiency 4 pickaxe with fortune, so ores are going to be a lot more useful, an efficiency 4 shovel, which meaning sand will insta mine, a lot of gold, a lot of diamonds, and some boots that have depth strider. Considering I'm in water pretty often, those are all immediate upgrades. As I was flying home, I passed another one of those weird runic portals. I'm still wondering what I'm supposed to do with all of these. I'm putting random items on the pedestals, but nothing seems to work. Maybe it's some sort of combination lock? I found another crashed airship nearby, nothing in the chests to report there. Seeing another one of those sulfurous biomes, but stopping for a smaller thing that you wouldn't expect. Overworld tree. And that tree was actually a harbinger of things to come because as I continued flying, I saw a fountain with a few different flowers, azalea bushes, loot in the chests in the fountain, yes. But the thing that I was actually most excited about here was the dirt. I didn't think I'd have a route to dirt at all in this playthrough. So that's why even though I was getting things like beetroot seeds, I didn't try farming them. I literally couldn't plant them. But with a couple stacks of dirt, some azalea bushes, and other decorative blocks from the overworld that I can't get any other way, I have a route to renewable farming now, which was not something I expected to be able to do. That could potentially solve my bone meal problem. And as I was flying home, luck would have it, things come in threes. I found yet another small patch of overworld, grabbing all of the treasure out of the chest inside. There were some efficiency tools that are definitely nice and harvesting all of the dirt up from here as well. I even got some seeds from some of the grass blocks so I can grow wheat which would be way more efficient than beetroot. I flew home over passing the lake and just checking that I hadn't left any loot behind the last time I was here, combining a few of the swords to get a pretty near perfect. It's not the best sword that I could have, but it works and it's gonna survive me the full 100 days. And now that I could do some farming, I thought I should really get set up into that, making a little purper and endstone area, getting some water by flying to and from the lake, making a water source, and then starting to set up a bit of a crop area area right here. I only add three wheat seeds to my name, but I had done far more with far less. Go watch my one chunk video if you want to see that one. But this was the start of a crop that could lead me to bone meal and 23 days in to plant my first seeds in the end. That's weird. But now that I had a silk touch pickaxe, a good portion of day 25 was just organization. I could now drop off a bunch of shulkers into an ender chest, which was the first thing that I did, emptying them out of my inventory to free up a whole bunch of slots. I made sure to name the silk touch pickaxe so I would know to use that, stashing the fortune one away that I could use that only really when I needed ores. I tried to combine chest plates, but I didn't have the levels to do so. I'd have to go do some farming. Thankfully, some of the farming came to me, but as long as I'm farming experience, do more with plants, maybe. I tried to plant some of the 
end lily seeds that I had collected, but they just wouldn't plant under the water here. I'm not sure why. I did a little bit more decorating around the house, mounting a few of the dragon heads, harvesting up some violacite stone to be able to complete the bricks, to be able to complete the frame. I'm using some of the fluorite flavorite. I, I still don't know what it's called. I still don't know how to pronounce it, but I finished the first floor and then used the deep purple woods to really give it that end vibe to start working on a porch and a main floor entranceway. And I went through a couple different iterations of this. I wasn't sure how exactly I wanted it to go, but I did that. I did the first floor and then I dug a hole through the wall to be able to move all of my storage into the basement area, which is where I thought I'd actually keep everything. And I did a couple different takes of this. It honestly took me the whole day and it was fun to be able to flex my building in one of these adventures instead of only focusing on combat. But I was short on anything except that very purple wood and I didn't want the whole house to just be the inside of Grimace. So I flew over towards the lake biome where the trees that were here were actually that nice kind of pale off white off yellow wood that would really help give me a nice little bit of contrast. Think endstone and purple, just in wood form. I'm using the woods with Vilacite for the trims. I'm using a lot of the purple logs to do some of the outer wood elements, using trapdoors to give myself nice windows that won't allow me to trigger Endermen even inadvertently. And it's coming along, it's getting there. I went out mining a little bit more of that flavor, right? Combining with Aurora crystals to make a few lanterns that would allow me to illuminate the space. Setting up a few fence gates and harvesting my very first piece of wheat, it was time to do a little bit of organizing. I moved the ender chest, my anvils, enchanting tables, and other things into the house itself. Setting up a few pedestals to kind of just maintain whatever I have. My decoration options are limited, so I have to play around with this a little bit more. But another thing that I had to worry about was food. I was down to only three fish to my name, and I've been doing a whole bunch of building, so I figured let me sail south, and it's time for some more simple fishing. Okay, I promise I'm not gonna do that accent every time that we're here at the lake, and we are at the lake moderately often, but consider this 100 days with a hobby. I just had to go fishing occasionally. It's weird that I have a hobby in one of these. I fished into the new day and it was not a good day for it. The first thing I caught was a plant that would give me cyan dye, but eventually I got to the point where I had about a half dozen fish and that would give me something to eat. I flew back towards the house, getting the fish cooking in one of the smelteries and then just moving a few things. I wasn't ready to fully commit to organization. I'm doing it a little bit piecemeal. One thing that was bothering me is that I only had one dragon head on the gate of my complex. So I flew off in another random direction, flying past a few POI that were clearly cut off by chunks from the very bright crystalline biomes through something that I can only describe as looking the end meets avatar. I really love this biome. If I had found it earlier, I might have based here instead. But I found another errant end ship. Grabbing the dragon head from its bow, I heard a sound that I was not expecting to hear. Phantoms were spawning in this dimension. Now, phantoms are actually really useful for me here. Granted, all of the elytra that I'm getting are pre-enchanted with unbreaking and mending. Thank you, better end. That is just such a good quality of life update. But getting phantom membrane is useful for some potion ingredients and I think can probably be used in some of the recipes for better foods that I could get. It all depends on whether or not they depend on overworld ingredients as well. But I looted everything out of the cargo hold of the ship, including the bookcases from the walls, heading over to an end city that was just at the edge of my render distance and fighting off a few shulkers while trying to work my way up through one of the towers here. This is one of the smaller entranceways, so I didn't have to worry about two tiers with four spawners on each level. It's just a single one, a lot of purple bookshelves, which I was able to silk touch, but the moment I made a hole in the roof, to be able to just consider leaving, I immediately got hit with multiple levitation bullets, which just pulled me up into the sky and made me just give up and start sailing back. I only had four rockets in my inventory, so I had to take each of them for as long as possible, riding that sine wave of just accelerating upward and coasting on whatever small, slow angle I could manage. And I landed in the lake with one rocket to my name and a few big mouth endermen trying to attack me. Considering I would need more bone meal for more gunpowder, I spiraled my way up to the top of one of the trees and used a few pairs of shears that I crafted up to lop off several additional layers of leaves. With my very last rocket, I flew over, dropped all the leaves into the composting machine, and then went inside to do a bit more decorating. The next morning, I'm really short on gunpowder and rockets, so I crafted a few of those up in the early day, getting only 
nine. It's not a lot, but it can get me flying where I can head out to get more of the ingredients. I'm mainly short on sulfur right now, so I sailed over to one of those kind of geyser sulfurous biomes. I'm still not sure what any of these are called. I'm just going with my versions of the names because I think it's funny like that. I broke sulfur crystals for a majority of the day fighting the odd stray big mouth endermen. I really, their head is just snapped back. That does not feel comfortable. But in searching around, I found an island that had a bunch of dirt and vines on the roof of it, and I wasn't expecting to be able to see yet another instance of the overworld leaking into the end. In mining that back, there was a chest inside with some pretty good loot. Oh, oh, yes, okay, I'll take this. Some free efficiency five tools is nothing that I could complain about. I actually switched to those temporarily while mining up the rest of the sulfur crystals, getting everything I could from the area, and then looking around for where I should head next. With the day rolling over, as I'm just sailing around from lake to lake right now, fighting a few of the endermen that shower, but still take damage from that, I did try to see if the larger leaves on the surface of the water actually can be converted into lilies, but that just doesn't work. I also figured out that yes, you have to plant the lilies in one of these biomes if you want them to actually grow. It's very weird that that is biome specific, but okay, we'll make it work. While I was back home drying out and trying to craft that into paper, I did do another pass just trying to plant the end lilies here. And when it didn't work, okay, I'm pretty sure it's biome specific at this point. So I spent some time moving chests inside, both organizing shulker boxes, crafting up a whole over a stack of rockets, which is the most I've had to this point, finishing organizing and flying south to the lake closest to the home where I was able to plant all of them on the morning of day 33. While those would start to grow because I figure I needed to be in range for them to receive random ticks, I checked out all of the ores at the bottom of the lake, breaking whatever lilies had already been grown here, and then looking around to see kind of what's the minimum viable distance I can be while going out and exploring. I saw this purple structure off in the distance, which was pretty exciting. There was some diamond armor in the chest right here, but diamond armor is cheap, especially in the end. I'm actually kind of excited about getting the candles and the lectern, more blocks that I just can't craft any other way. There's another one of those houses as well. This one partially flooded with some beetroot seeds and a lot of gold in its chest, but I flew from that off in a direction to yet another. The real estate market here is a little bit weird, but we're gonna try to make it work. While trying to maintain in render distance of the lake so those plants would grow, I checked out one of those spheres. There's kind of an obsidian cage in the middle, which I think would potentially surround a spawner and a bunch of ancient debris hidden inside the walls behind all of those chiseled endstone. Now knowing that that was a good loot source, I'll keep those in mind for the future. I flew over to a nearby end city, breaking all of the spawners here and grabbing all of the loot from the top of the building. Struggling as usual with getting pinned up against the ceiling by levitation darts. Once I was in the top of this one though, I grabbed all of the blocks and did my patented block off most of the floor. Unfortunately, I missed one gap, which was just enough for a lot of shulker bullets to make their way upstairs and keep me on the ceiling for a little bit. I eventually fell down, looted all of the chests that were here, and went down trying to get that blue block in the middle of all of these end cities, which is definitely important, and I still haven't gotten one. And I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit frustrating. Shulkers are the final boss here? I thought that would be the dragon on like day 99, but no, shulkers are the ones holding me back from getting the treasure I want. Giving up on that though for a little bit, I figured go get the treasure I can get. Finding a few more of those spears that had been cut off by terrain generation, grabbing the ancient debris out of their walls, checking another one of those towers that doesn't have a door, or an inside, really, grabbing the treasure from on top of there and then sailing through all of the biomes returning back home near the end of the day. I have a significant number of shulker boxes now. They're mostly categorized, but the chest outside is still just kind of dropping whatever armor I can out here. I mined up all of the ores with fortune to get the ender shards that was supposed to be there, crafting up a few bookcases of different variants that I could use to hide the staircase inside the home to make it just a little bit more decorative. It means the front windows are a little kind of superfluous, but it makes it so I don't have to decorate underneath the stairs or have these weird gaps wherever the slabs don't work. I threw some lighting down in the basement, and now that I had an eye of ender, I crafted myself up an infusion pedestal. This would allow me to do some basic enchanting here in the 
end. And it also allows me to craft some upgraded armors that are exclusive to this dimension. I set up the little three by three square of pedestals where you have to put the right items in each location, but I don't have all the materials to use that yet. But instead, I refocus my efforts to organizing and moving all of my storage into the basement of the house so that it's not visible along the grounds. Once I had a whole bunch of chests crafted up inside, I was just grabbing everything from the barrels and starting to try to categorize that. Building up the outer shell of the third floor when I had somebody come soliciting at my doorstep. Hello. Potion of haste. How do we get instant health three? Oh, that doesn't, that's such a tease. That's such a tease. I could, oh, I do want the haste potion though. Oh yeah, I can afford it. Yeah, let's do, let's get haste. I don't know when I'm going to need that. When I'm going to need it, I'm really going to need it. And I'm going to want it really bad. A potion of haste is something you can't get in vanilla. That's one of the reasons I love modded. They take vanilla features and kind of reintegrate them back into the game in an interesting way. I needed to go get a lot more Vilocyte. I wasn't going to use that haste right away though. An efficiency five pickaxe makes pretty good work of collecting these blocks. Day 36, I'm making really good time in building this base out. I completed the frame on the upper floor, moving a lot of these smelters down to the very basement, and then working on breaking out all of the floor right here, replacing it with raw vilocyte. So it kind of carries the color and tone of everything else that I have. The basement is very purple, but it has a lot of different textures that are really unique. From there, it was time to finally start breaking barrels, moving some of them onto the main floor to keep things like records in place. But I knew I had more than what I could could fit in the single chest, so I flew over, grabbed a few extra logs that I could turn all the chests into doubles, also grabbing some cool jelly shroom wood, which would allow me to make these nice blue trapdoor windows, which gave me yet another way where everything just kind of plays nicely. I extended the staircase up to the third floor, working on the floor there, so my bottom two were fully enclosed, even if the structure isn't fully done. And while combining the bookcase with the second floor was a little bit difficult, the structure is coming together. It's not perfect, it needs a lot more decoration, but in doing this all just seat in my pants, no pre-planning, I'm happy that I'm at least using things effectively. The following day, it was just a little bit more detail work. I threw some buttons down to kind of simulate mushrooms growing on the side of a house, putting some planters down in front of the front windows and some plants in top of all of those. All of the purple candles I had been collecting from all of these random structures ended up on the posts to my entrance walkway and I ran around grabbing a few more plants and greenery that I could immediately replant around the house. On my way home, I saw another one of those spheres, this one with way more ancient debris down in the base and on the walls, and I figured out what that spawner was for. So that spawns evokers, which actually goes nicely with these smaller pedestals that also seem to have ancient debris where vex are spawned. And now I'm seeing a bit of a pattern between these additional structures. Flying back home, I put down all of the greenery that I had collected, making a few other patches of this blue overgrown endstone where I could put down more plants on there. They're all bioluminescent, so it helps light up the structure as well. I did a little bit of farming, getting to the point where I have at least a full row of seeds growing, but I am out of food yet again. So I sailed back down to the lake on day 38, doing a little bit of sword fishing, and then it's honest work. It's not too interesting or amazing, but I just did some good old fashioned fishing all day. I promised you I wasn't gonna do that voice, and I lied, but I am gonna promise you that I won't do it again. But yeah, day 38 was just all fishing, and then whenever the lilies would grow, I would break those, replant the seeds, and have more growing. Thankfully, they grow pretty fast, so I was getting a good repository of both food and potential paper, sailing my way back up home the following day, cooking both in all of the furnaces, furni, furnaces. I'm not 100% certain, but I properly doubled up on the bone meal production in the composters directly in front of the base, switching everything to double chests, double furnaces, double composters, you know, doubled up. And then I had another goblin trader visit me. Hello. Oh my God, that requires 20. I got so excited until I realized it. <laughs> 24 netherite. 48, 96 ancient debris. 96 ancient debris and I have 16. Uh, that's such a bummer. You are such a tease, you know that? 
killing me. I really wish I figured out how to get instant health three. How do I get instant health three? I can't. Nope, I can't. All right, let's just go get leaves. Needing some bone meal, I sailed south, lopped off the top of a tree again, returning back the following morning, throwing in a couple rows worth of leaves into the shulker box. As the composters did their job, I started moving items down into the inventory in the basement. I don't have a lot of item frames. The only way I can get those is from the front of end ships. So labeling things is kind of out of the question. I kind of have to do this by memory. I'm basically making a chest of end colored blocks, a chest of all of the modded blocks that have all sorts of different colors, moving all of the armor into one, all of the weapons into another, and organizing all of my treasures right dead and center. I'm hoping that I can kind of just memorize this placement. Spoiler alert, I don't. Because without really labeling, it's gonna be difficult. Spoiler alert, it is. I actually dug a hole in the wall right here, so I didn't have to walk up to the first floor and then walk down to the basement every time I wanted to put things in, which definitely made it a lot faster, but is making me question this placement for long-term use of this base. Getting to the storage room is taking a few extra steps, but it it's function, form, form over function. But with everything done, I had a few extra pieces of armor with extra enchants on them, and I spent some time combining those all on the anvil to get my gear a little bit closer to complete. Day 41, I sailed out for another round of exploration around the end, this time mainly heading north to see what I could find around the circle of the central island. I'll probably go explore there at some point, but I do want to hit everything in the outer end islands and have it all explored. I found my way to a crashed ship, absolutely nailing the entrance through the door while still in flight, grabbing the podiums and pedestals from there, heading over to a perfectly functional flying ship, having to take a couple passes to be able to really attack this thing before getting the elytra and kind of importantly, the item frame at the front of the ship for my storage system. So if I wanted to do that lap, I figure now is as good a time as any. I'm pretty stocked on rockets. I have well over a stack so I could theoretically make a full loop around the central island and know what everything looks like, at least the beginning of the outer end. I passed by a couple more end cities, finding another airship that was populated with far too many shulkers, grabbing all of the loot from here and continuing to hoard it away in my little dragon cave that I would eventually turn into a base at some point in the future. I also grabbed the shulkers from the top of the tower here to just make sure I would have the capacity to continue carrying more loot. Right around the meaning of life, I started making my way to the northernmost point of that central ring, curving along to the south, now having the void to my left as I'm working my way around the circle of the central island. There was more towers and treasures waiting for me along the way, including a few stray end ships that didn't have an associated city attached, but still had wings, item frames, and a whole lot of treasure. And I was making pretty good time. I had almost connected up all of these new chunks with everything that I had ventured out from the base in the original exploration, just kind of clockwise instead of counterclockwise. I made to another one of those small little purple and end stone temples. And with that, I had hit the point where all of the chunks had rendered in and I had completed the loop. So now being a little bit closer towards home, I just continued around counterclockwise, having to stop at one point to craft up some additional rockets because I was at bingo fuel. Seeing another one of those airships, grabbing wool from the top just so I could do some decorative things in my house, like adding a bed, even though I can't sleep in it or I will explode. And it was here that I found out that these airships actually have phantom spawners as well, which that's just terrifying, I'm not gonna lie. At first, I was a little confused as to how they were spawning. I'm thinking maybe it's something to do with this shadow biome that I'm in, but no, there's actually the spawners embedded in the front and the back of the airship dirigible kind of balloon. And that was what was causing all of these sky rats to be around. And then the shulker bullets started coming in, so I'm levitating up in the sky being attacked by phantoms. I took a dive off in the distance, flying away to try to give myself as much space as I could, returning home after a little three-day trip around the dimension. Day 43, it was time to get to work. First, I was putting up all of those item frames that I had collected in my trip, storing off all of the treasures in the corresponding boxes before going out to do a bit of terraforming. I had now three more purple pedestals, so my crafting and enchanting infusion setup was finally complete. And with the structure coming along, I needed to do a bit more terraforming. Now, is it still Terra if it's not Earth? 
I'm not 100% sure. End forming might be the word here, but I just demolished and continued working on getting that island flattened out, finally getting it to the point where it's a nice, easy entranceway, even though the cacti are a bit of a Discord bright mode flashbang. I cleared a few of those out, dropping off all of the blocks, having to split my end stone colored blocks into multiple chests, dropping off an additional few plants, and then doing some investigation into if I can craft leather in only this dimension. Spoilers, the answer is unfortunately no, and there aren't easy ways to be able to get it, but that did lead me into investigating other crafting opportunities, including this really awesome looking crystalline armor. That required terminite, which I wasn't sure exactly how to get, so I did some investigating there, which also led me to look into different and better food options. A lot of them required overworld ingredients as a contribution to the recipe, but not all of them. So I sailed south and went to replenish on my food stores because, you guessed it, I had been out of food after my trip around the world. I collected some fish, some slime, and some other friendly mob drops, checking from lake to lake because I didn't really want to do fishing right now, and instead I just wanted to seek out the ones that were actually visible in the dimension and stab them to turn them into food. I did that all the way through day 45, finding a few odd ore chunks here and there, and some neon yellow fish in the sulfurous biomes, which kind of complement nicely to the ones that I had found in the lakes so far. Returning back home with about 20 pieces of food, throwing down the ore, and storing my fishing sword on a pedestal right here. I really should have kept that with me, you'll see why later, but it just kind of waited at home. I had found a pair of feather falling shoes along my trip, but I didn't have the levels needed to enchant them. I could, however, fully complete my diamond chest plate, getting me protection, unbreaking, and mending, which means it will last through the rest of this adventure. I wanted to see how I could get infusion to be able to actually do some enchanting on the pedestals, but it wasn't really giving me a good idea, and a lot of it required lapis, which was really unfortunate. I was lucky that Eyes of Ender are craftable without blaze powder in this mod pack, so I can make those here exclusively in the end, but it was another instance of the dimension lock that I'm putting myself in this challenge kind of isolates me from enchanting. Now, I could have added lapis to the end. It was possible. It's super easy, actually, with the mod packs, but I like having that restriction, having to approach the game in a different way, that's what makes these fun. If you just add overworld ores to this dimension, which you totally can, and I'll link an extra mod that you can turn on in the pack, but it for me, it removes part of it. It makes it you're surviving in the overworld with a different coat of paint, and I don't want to do that this way. As I was talking about though, that's a really nice b-roll of building the house behind me, so at least you're getting some construction complete. The following day, I was looking around on my map, trying to see any structures that were on the very border of rendered chunks that I hadn't potentially yet explored, seeing a city off in the distance and starting to fly over that direction. As I landed right next to the kind of shadow forest, there were these umbralith arches that were there and these red streaks in the stone, which made me think that it was a new kind of ore. Once I cleared the mobs nearby, I found out that wasn't exactly the case. Okay, so that's not an ore. That's such a tease. That's probably an ore though. So I flew over towards the edge of that island. It was another one of the amber biomes. And if you mine these up, you get raw amber, which you can then craft into the full amber gems. This is another way to get those without having only loot structures, but sometimes they would just fall over to the void. Oh, come on. After collecting a little bit of that, I continued off towards my initial goal, finding a few more of those Aurora crystals and harvesting them up. They turn purple when you turn them into block form. Landing at the Shadow House and realizing I was retracing my steps. Oh, this is the one I've been to. <laughs> I've been here. Thankfully, there was a few other POI nearby that were unlooted. First was another one of those little purple dioceses with one of the lecterns on top of it. And then a little bit further out still is another shadow house containing another amber gem and another eye of ender, which would be very useful as I had used my only one to craft up that infusion pedestal. I grabbed a few of the mushrooms around the walls that were here as nice decoration blocks, picked up the end smelter and then started flying, landing at a 
nearby airship and end city, breaking the spawners in here and dealing with the shulkers while grabbing all of the loot, mainly collecting emeralds in case the next end goblin would spawn with something that I could potentially trade for. Now knowing that phantoms spawn on these airships, I made it very quick to get in, loot it, and get out, heading over towards the city proper, breaking into one of the smaller towers, breaking the spawner and getting a few shulker boxes and other pieces of loot, and then heading down to one of the lower areas to try to get to the loot chest there and pick up another ender chest along the way. And shulkers are definitely the final boss of this adventure. I had to deal with quite a few hits and without really a good fly path out of here, I just kept my chest plate on and was tanking the damage. Okay, come, no, <laughs> dang it. Come on, stop it, stop it, stop it, <laughs> stop it, put me down. Put me down! <laughs> oh, I hate it! I hate it so much! <laughs> Put me down! I could out heal it with food, and wouldn't you know it, a goblin trader actually popped in as I was attacking the tower. It's almost like they were watching the commentary. It's I love it when things like that happen. <laughs> They're getting covered away too! But I eventually got into the room, blocking off the door, and thinking, I've got this covered. Yeah, sure, it was, okay. I, I only had to deal with the ones that were inside this space still, but that's only about four shulkers, and they were able to get killed relatively quickly, getting me to some finally solid ground and the honestly underwhelming loot inside of the chest. And the second I opened the door? Nah, come on! <laughs> oh, that's so annoying. I hate it so much. I need a bow. Fighting shulkers and looting end cities is kind of the main way I'm getting anything right now, if you really think about it. There's no mining for diamonds or anything else that you can really convert into tools. There's the thalassium equivalents, but I can't enchant those without lapis to power the infusion pedestals. So getting the high roll enchanted gear that you can get from an end city is the only way that I'm actually able to get anything that is worthwhile. That doesn't stop it from being frustrating as hell sometimes though. <laughs> I do hate this. They are annoying. No, no, no! Every time I'm done, they hit me. It drives me crazy. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? With that one stray bullet just finally wearing off. Yeah, I'm I'm annoyed. I'm even annoyed now. I flew back towards home, landing at the lake, collecting a whole bunch of end lilies and fish as I had spent about half of my food supplies to this point, just recovering from the damage from multiple different shulker blasts. I'd also forgotten my quote unquote fishing sword. And while I was getting really good rates as far as the mobs dropping, none of them were cooked. So I'm gonna have to fly back home to be able to actually complete that process. The flight back took a good portion of day 49, landing and heading straight down to the basement, converting a lot of the lilies into their dried form, which would become paper, and starting to do a little bit of farming to try to get a bit more bone meal. I spent some time organizing all of the inventory and the treasure that I had collected in this loot run, heading up to see if I could combine my boots to be able to get a repaired version that also had a higher tier of feather falling. And I was a few levels off. Once all the food had finished completing, I dropped down all of the ores, mining that up with my fortune pickaxe, thinking that that might help me with a little bit of levels. And it was now that it was actually confirmed to me that that's how you get the amber gems. But I needed levels at this point, so I headed out, made a little too high hut that would make me safe from any enderman attack, and then just made eye contact, and then proceeded to unmake eye contact with several different endermen. Some of my gear has mending on it, so that's got to get repaired first, which means it's going to chew up a bit of the experience. But I got to the point where I had all of it repaired and I was still gaining very slowly. So I thought, let's go to a place where spawns are a little bit more efficient, flying out towards the end islands, the really tiny ones that are right near the void, right around the central island. From here, I blocked up the area. I made another little hut that would protect me from Enderman and rates here were better. 
they were better. There was two islands that I could fly back and forth to that were both inside of the spawning radius of the other. I would basically clear one island of its population and then go fly over to the other one to get a bit of experience. Once I had two levels, I flew home to combine my boots so that any future experience gains would be at a higher rate since lower levels are a lot easier to upgrade to. But since this was gonna be slow going, I did a little bit more research into those infusion pedestals to see if there was anything I could get out of there. Something that I found was a crystallized elytra, which would give me both armor, about an iron chest plate's worth, while also having wings. And my only hope was if I used one of my enchanted elytras, that would carry over too. But I'm just gonna let you all see my frustration with trying to make this work before I tell you how it all works, okay? Okay, watch this. Okay, how? It has to face north? North. North. Oh. Um. Okay. I'm 75. I don't know what this is supposed to do. <laughs> is there supposed to be an animation? Is Maybe I need a button. Do I need a button? Maybe I need a button. Come here. Button. Infusion pedestal. Aurora Crystal Shard. North. They're all facing north. How do I make this work? <laughs> Magic. How, how does it work? I don't know. Do I, I don't want to look it up. But I want to make it work. Time 75. 75 seconds? I'll just wait. I'll wait. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Okay. I want you to pause and leave a comment right now with what you think I'm doing wrong. Okay. Okay. Don't worry. We'll get back to it in a couple days. Anyway, I did now have proper mushrooms. So I was able to replace the buttons on the walls of the house with actual bioluminescent mushrooms. I also went and crafted up a lot more violacite bricks that I could use to start working on an upper trim for around the house using a combination of endstone walls and the Laku Grove fences to be able to set a nice little bit of crenellation surrounding the place. I broke down a few of the cacti as it was starting to get a little too bright honestly in this area. I'm working on this mainly at night, I'm not gonna lie. But I ran out of materials about halfway through the project and decided to return back to enchanting. And have you left your comment yet? I bet you're not gonna guess this is why. Is it this? Maybe it's this. Circles. Oh yeah, it's this, okay. Circles in Minecraft, who knew? Oh, okay. So 75 is not very long. I don't know what that means, but it's not very long. Okay. That's those. Oh, this is cool. It takes a little longer though. Oh, this looks fun. Oh, <laughs> I look cool. This is a chest plate plus. Oh, but the... Cape is, it doesn't know how to handle the cape, but you know what? I don't care. This is so cool. So with now armed and armored versions of my wings, I flew out and just did a little bit of resource collection to end the day. That felt like a pretty good success. Day 53, I'm working on finalizing up the roof, getting that all enclosed in and getting the different fence gates in place to make sure that that all works. I also finished the bookcase wall on the main floor up to the second floor. Did make for some weird colorization changes, but I'll make it work. Throwing some basic decorations up on the top floor, checking in on my farming and trying to make some ender dust that I could start making some thalassium plates. That crystalline armor would be a really nice end game set. I just need to figure out how to enchant it. But we're far enough into the video that everybody who stopped watching probably wouldn't see this. I actually went and I grabbed some shears and I went and harvested all of the leaves from that amber root 
just because it was bothering me, okay? You're welcome. But unfortunately, those leaves didn't give me anything that I could bone meal. So I flew back over towards the lake to just continue lopping off the top of the tree layer by layer, slicing that down into a bunch of logs that I could turn into sticks, fuel, and crafting materials, and a bunch of leaves that I could eventually compost down into bone meal, which would allow me to get a lot more rockets. Once my pockets were full, the leaves went into the composter, the logs went into the furnace to get myself some more charcoal so I could continue crafting up. I started also smelting some sand into glass just so I'd be able to use that for a later date. And it was mainly just inventory organization, quietly plowing through everything to get it ready to go. The following morning, I collected and combined everything, finding out that I'm once again bottlenecked on sulfur. So I had to sail over towards another one of the brimstone biomes to search for more crystals and get those all broken down. And you could probably tell, this adventure in the end falls more into something like a one chunk video, where it's about accomplishing everything with super limited resources than say a skulk video, where it's all combat oriented. That being said, I love a good boss fight as much as the next person. So I flew over to a nearby pedestal and let's get into some trouble. You know, uh, we haven't had a lot of combat challenges this hundred days, it's been more about building stuff. So. Let's go ahead and give ourselves a nice little combat challenge. What do you say? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I can fly, so that's not a problem. <laughs> Ow. Does damage. Come on, come on, come on. Whoa. Come on. Let's go. What is up here? Oh, obsidian heart. Nice. That looks fun. What does what do you make? Wait. <laughs> that looks sick. 64 blocks cannot stack. Explosion power. Interesting. This looks fun though. Ancient anima. Oh, I need to kill this thing. I need to kill this thing. Wait, how do I kill that thing? Contemplating future murder aside, I sailed off, continuing in the same direction that I had been going, finding another one of those shadow mansions with a bunch of cool loot. What are you, Eter Eternium? I researched what that could be turned into, and it's kind of the other end game armor set, like the dark and broody, moody version of the armor. I spent some time collecting up a bunch of blocks there that I could also use as decorations back home, fighting a few big mouth endermen, getting teleported around randomly, and flying over to a jelly shroom biome where I collected the entire top of one of these trees. These semi-translucent purple blocks are awesome. I wanna build something with them. I just don't know what just yet. And on the way home, I thought maybe let's get into some more trouble. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> we'll deal with big boy in a little bit. 
But I checked in on one of those towers with no entrances. It's basically just a really tall, really fancy pedestal. Crafting up rockets, checking in on one of those spheres that was sliced in half, and then taking my sweet time flying back home, taking the scenic route and checking out a few end ships along the way. But it was while I was exploring around in the kind of southwestern area of my base that I found this very cool purple structure. It's a larger version of those dioceses that we have seen the lecterns on. And it's full of shulkers, as almost everything in the end is. And it's funny because there's also shulker boxes that I would try to swing at and turns out they're actually just a chest. The loot in here is nice, but it's actually something inside that I got super excited about. Oh, the mother load. That's a lot of diamonds. Ooh, respiration. Oh, wait, wait. Blackstone. Okay. Yes! Okay, so I based this pack off of the nether pack. Because uh, originally I was going to do both together, but then I decided to make it two videos. And uh, this blackstone is going to be really, really, really important. And I'm not kidding. That blackstone is key to my victory, believe it or not. On the way home, I saw another one of those mutant endermen down on one of the tiny little islands, and I thought, okay, let's get into some trouble. Okay, I want to do this just because I don't know when I'm going to get another chance. Ow. Whoa, this is trippy. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> well, you use the tools you got, right? <laughs> but I sailed all the way back home, landing in and being super excited for what I can do next. Okay, this is huge. Genuinely huge. Oh, thank goodness. Yes! Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So, this is why this is important. You can take... Where's something to here's something to disenchant. With the with one of the mods in here, you can take this and you lose the item. Right? You lose the item. But you get the book, but it costs a ton of levels to do. So I can disenchant the elytra. Oh, you do, you get to keep it. I didn't realize you get to keep it. But now I can put this on here so now my elytra can actually be good again and I can have the armored one now the trick is this is gonna cost a whole lot of levels like a lot of levels I have some work to do 25 levels okay okay we're gonna need levels we have a lot of work to do, but first things first, let's get these wings repaired. Now that they have mending, I can wear them while going and killing Endermen by the hundreds. And I basically did that for a majority of the day until the their grown up, their, their daddy spawned. Oh. <laughs> oh, it makes me nervous. Once I knew I was a little bit safe, I kept killing Endermen until I started seeing my level rising, which told me that my wings were fully repaired, and it was time to fly home and see what the minimum level I needed for some of these other enchantment transitions that I wanted to do would be. And it turns out they're all super expensive. So we have some building to do to be able to get a really reliable source of experience. Thankfully, we're in a dimension where one of the best XP sources can be found. I started collecting all of the different blocks using those purple jelly blocks and a ton of endstone, grabbing everything, organizing it, putting it into a shulker box, preparing for what will be a multi-day build that will be something I've never done in 100 days before and hopefully unlock a lot of really cool tech. But I need more blocks for that. So I flew over towards a nearby end city, one specifically that I had cleared mostly of shulkers, getting a lot of the columns and other blocks from around here, the glowy blocks from inside of the column, and then getting hit by shulkers. Oh, come on. My dealings with gravity notwithstanding, this is a really great place to collect a lot of the resources. I just need to make sure that every single gap in the walls is closed at all times because those little buggers will constantly find me. But once I was done, I started sailing off and it's time to find a build site. 
I want to find a place that is at least 128 blocks from anything as low as I possibly can manage, and you're probably guessing what I'm doing by now. But I'm finding weirdness along the way. Is this snow? It is. But as I sailed out to the void, I saw one of those platforms that the Vex normally spawn on, and it was at pretty much a great position, and it's for free ancient debris. So once that was clear, it was time to start clearing the area and build an Enderman farm. And that started with excavating down this island that I'm standing on. It's actually at a pretty good height, uh, maybe a little bit higher than what would be optimal spawn rates, but still pretty good considering it's out in the middle of the void and there's no potential spawning area close by. I'm gonna do this though without any tutorials or anything else like that. I'm just gonna try to build this from memory. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm setting up a nice optimal spawning space in the middle of the island with a few different columns and everything around there getting down as low as I possibly can to increase the spawn rates as much as possible, and then starting to build up an area where I would be safe from Enderman teleporting, having it be less than three blocks tall so they can't get to me. Once that was done, I started using those jelly shroom blocks to start making the drop shoot. Endermen need to drop 43 blocks in order to be down to a one hit kill, which is what you want them to be because if you damage them and they, you don't kill them, they might teleport away, which makes the farm really inefficient. And the downside was is I didn't have anywhere near enough blocks. I barely had enough to make the vertical distance, let alone building all the rings. So I just mapped out exactly where that needed to go and then as soon as I was out, dropped some water, rode that down, and started making as many rings as I possibly could given the limited supplies that I had. I got about a third of the way up, so I'm gonna have to go get some more supplies. I then started making the bottom platform out of purple and endstone with these nice blue lights surrounded by trapdoors on each end to light up the bottom and give it a little bit more of a nice aesthetic vibe. As I was working on that, and yes, we've been at this for two days straight, I did see a mutant enderman just absolutely freak out against the void, which was very interesting. Getting to the point where I was completely out of supplies, banking a few things, marking the location, and then flying off to where I needed to go. The closer jelly shroom trees were the wrong color. I wanna make sure everything is gonna be consistent and this doesn't look patchwork. So I flew off towards through the lakes and over towards a different capped glow shroom biome where I was able to find a lot of the purple blocks, which thankfully are insta-break, which is awesome. But somehow, and I mean somehow, the shulkers found me. Wait, where did I just get hit from? Are you kidding me? But once I had stuffed my pockets with enough purple blocks, throwing that into a shulker box, I flew over towards that end city to just take out some of my aggression, immediately being levitated into the sky. I also came here for purple blocks. I could craft them theoretically by setting up a big coarse fruit farm, or I could just loot end cities for as many of these column blocks as I possibly can, considering they are what I started making the decorations out of. I was at that for a while on one of the side towers until you saw that mess of chorus bullets right in front of me and decided maybe it's time to leave, heading to another city and then just mining my way down the central shaft of that one, grabbing as many columns as I could. I worked my way up to the top room of that. I say worked my way. I was forced up by levitation, grabbing all of the columns from the upper room, making sure to block the floor so I wouldn't be bothered by anything there, grabbing a few of the other decorative blocks while I was at it. And I thought, yeah, maybe let's go get some food because I only had two fish to my name. Doing a little bit of fishing in the lakes nearby, I mainly do it via swordfish, but I didn't have my good fire aspect sword. I only had my nice looting one, which meant I'd have to fly back home to get everything cooked so that it was actually useful as food. While back at the house, it's day 65, I'm just doing a little bit of random chores. The fish are cooking, the wheat is growing, the things are being turned into bone meal, and that's kind of it. By the time everything was done and I flew back over towards the spawning platform, it was already day kill all the Jedi. And once I flew back towards there, let's start a little bit of a building montage, but I'm gonna do things out of order. Later in the day, I did get a visit from an end goblin trader and check that out. Hello, a zip. Wait, I can get wood. Opal sword chest. Oh, come on. How do I get opal? How do I even get opal? I want that. How do I get opal? Tell me how I get opal. Tell me. 
Goodbye. <laughs> okay, now let's do the montage. Okay, that's annoying. Okay, so now I need more purple because of course we do. Running out of blocks is going to be a bit of a theme for the next couple days, but I flew my way back over towards one of the nearby end cities, this one being one that I hadn't broken any spawners in, so there's a bit more of a chaotic battle to try to get the resources with infinite shulker boxes constantly appearing on my head. Oh boy. <laughs> that was potentially really bad. I looked away for one second. I wouldn't let that deter me though. Flying back to grab any of the purple columns from some of the smaller buildings, the more isolated ones, and occasionally having to go into the more populated buildings, but fighting my way through all of the shulkers to break them down, to be able to collect all of the blocks and plunder their resources. Like I was that dude from Frozen who everybody thought would be the villain. In one of the chests, I did end up getting a silk touch pickaxe, which, actually felt pretty good. I'd be able to use that to be able to migrate the enchants to something else if I can finally get the resources and XP I need to do it. I continued grabbing all of the blocks into day 68, finally flying away and back over to the tower with enough purple columns to complete the final details of the top of the roof. I actually had to use chorus fruit to heal myself up because there's a few big mouth endermen over there and that just cancels your flight, which is terrifying to really think about, but I was able to finally recover and get myself back over towards the lake to do a bit more fishing. So without access to flint, there's no way to get an arrow that I can currently figure out which would enable to actually allow me to fight at range. You're probably asking yourself, why hasn't he used a bow? I have nothing to shoot with it. And that is one of the main challenges of this mod pack. How can you enable ranged combat? But as I stopped over at home to get that all cooked up, I pondered what I had to do. Looking through all of my inventory, just trying to find a route to a single piece of flint, a single feather, a single arrow to enable me to be able to fight at range. But with that still undone, I'm flying back over towards the Enderman farm, trying to get it done so I could start using those levels. But the Big Mouth Endermen are actually a bit of a problem for me right now, keeping me below half health and constantly teleporting me around that I can't get this farm finished. Oh my God. But I'm nothing if not stubborn. Even if it took me another 20 minutes to get the thing done, I did finally get all of the outer trim done, the detail work inside of the platforms, and the spawning area is complete. But it's now time for one of the hardest parts of the whole thing, getting myself an endermite. I set up the spawning chamber in the center, building up a few blocks, putting down an iron bar, getting ready to be able to put down a minecart with an endermite inside, which there's only one real way to spawn them, and anybody who's ever made an enderman farm knows how annoying this process is. Okay, so that cost me all of my food and a good chunk of my health, and I didn't even go through all of my pearls, so I had to fly all the way back over towards the lake to do some good old-fashioned fishing and try to heal myself up and get some food that I wouldn't, you know, die. All I was getting was algae, so I flew over towards one of the other end biomes, grabbing myself a whole bunch of chorus fruit just to be able to heal temporarily, mining up a lot of thalassium ore, and just trying to figure out what I'm going to do next. 
I also picked up some Ender Shard Ore, which I'd be able to fortune back home, which will be useful for something that we'll get into crafting in just a little bit. But I flew over towards a new lake biome, finding a few free floating fish that I was able to turn into food, and then tried to see what I could craft from the gelatin that I was getting from the jellyfish around here. Turns out there's something that I can. Oh, shadow berry. So now with a hint on a new food source, one that I can actually make kind of in bulk considering I've been stockpiling gelatin for 71 days, I flew over towards the nearest shadow biome, trying to figure out where I could get shadow berries from the ground here. Now some of the plants will wither you, some will blind you, so I have to be careful walking around, but I did eventually figure out what exactly those look like. And I grabbed a bit of the corrupted earth here thinking hopefully I can grow them back at home with the a little bit of luck and this one not being biome locked. Once I had what felt like enough, I did a bit more sword fishing in the lakes closer to my house, rolling over into day 72, completing that because I saw a ton of fish here. So I'm going to have a good supply of food, which is good because I'm going to be intentionally damaging myself for a little while until I get an endermite eventually. I stopped over at another amber biome, breaking a lot of the grass here because I need to find some amber root, which can be crafted down into sugar. The only problem was I was breaking all of the different plants that I could find in this biome and I'm not getting much luck. It's just amber grass or these spiral root trees. I'm thinking maybe it's the stuff that's hanging off of the bottom of the islands, but I can't find a spot where I actually have an accessible entry point to be able to get in via a cave or something where there's a ledge that I can stand on. So for now, I just flew back home cooking up the shadow berries and the fish in the different smelters so they could all get into useful forms. Going through my chests thinking I had some amber root, but it was just some more of that amber grass. I did a bit of farming the next day, just trying to get up some more bone meal so I could craft some more gunpowder for more rockets for more transport, letting all of the food get down to a good cooked state. I was checking around some of the other amber biomes directly around my house, going down to some of the lower islands here, thinking that maybe I could get to these hanging plants underneath, and then realizing that these different plants very low down in the biomes are actually the amber root that I was looking for. Turns out it just grows at a much lower altitude and requires a very nice specific island setup. So with enough of that, I flew back home, crafted a lot of that up into sugar, and I was able to craft up all of the cooked shadow berries into shadow berry gelatin squares. I basically made jello. I made darkness jello. Darkness, edgy, jello, nice nutrition. I, I don't know. I'm doing a Lego Batman thing. I don't know if that works. There might. Just don't at me. Leave it in the video. Okay, please. Please. But as the day rolled over, I crafted up a whole bunch more rockets and I finally have what I need to be able to fly back towards the Enderman farm to try to get this thing running. I have a whole ton of fish and a whole bunch of pearls and I'm working my way through all of those pearls and they all disappeared and oh wait, I'm thinking this is not how this is supposed to go. But yeah, I was fully out of pearls within a few minutes flying over to one of the other low islands that I had built the lo-fi version of the farms on and then just making eye contact and stabbing in the thighs all of the endermen that were around here collect a whole bunch more pearls, flying back over towards the ideal farm design and attempting to spawn an endermite. I went through three stacks of ender pearls and got nothing. So guess what? I worked my way back down over towards the islands and stabbed some more endermen in the thighs, grabbing a whole bunch more pearls, working my way back over. And thankfully, so thankfully, within two pearls, an endermite finally spawned. I trapped them in a minecart here, and if you're seeing what I'm missing, don't worry, I'll figure it out soon. Breaking down all of the different blocks and getting the endermite in place on top of the trapdoor here, letting all of the endermen be very upset. God, this is terrifying. Why are you attacking me? Once I had dealt with those couple aggressive outliers, I went over towards the center, opening up all of the trapdoors to allow the endermen to fall down into the killing chamber below. Once they were all down there, I accidentally looked into the crowd, which absolutely upset everybody, carefully flying my way, spiraling around the outer edge of the platform, making it underneath the roof and clearing up all of the stragglers. Once that was all done, I'm thinking, why isn't this working? 
this should be working. This should just be a constant scream of Enderman in pain. Oh, I don't like this. I really don't like the sound of this. So that was disappointing. I thought minecarts did the same thing that boats do, which would prevent mobs from despawning, and that the name tag that was always recommended when building an enderman farm was just for security's sake. But it turns out, nope, I'm an idiot, I'm wrong, and the only way to get a name tag is gonna be some very difficult options. Fishing, I don't wanna spend fishing. I just did a video all about fishing, and or I'm about to do a video all about fishing because I'm not sure which order these videos are releasing in and I've already done enough fishing in this hundred days. So I went through everything I could find in this base and I even did a little bit of investigating into what I could disenchant with the little bit of levels that I had. If there's anything valuable that I could use, I was able to get that silk touch book off of something, but I don't know what to put it on. So I'm not really going to jump on that opportunity just yet. Instead, I made myself some shears and took up my aggression by lopping off the top of a nearby tree. I did that going into day 76, breaking through an entire four sets of shears, dropping off all of those leaves into the composter while taking some of the logs that I had collected and smelting those up into some more charcoal. And you can see where I'm going with this. It's time for another gunpowder run. Once I had collected all of those resources with the remaining sulfur crystals that I had left over from the last time I had went to the brimstone biomes, I was finally restocked up in rockets that I could fly around wherever I wanted, basically, grabbing all of the end lily seeds and heading over towards the lake nearby, planting all of that down and swimming from basically three different patches of lilies, which would grow as soon as I did that loop, which are thankfully forgivingly fast, allowing me to craft up a whole bunch more paper to be able to be set for more rockets. But while the furnaces went and a few other things were just processing, the lilies were drying, I figured let's do some work here around the house. I put down some additional stairs as chairs, some barrels, some different trapdoors as tables, and setting up some different decorations from all the plants that I've been collecting that are both natural and unnatural to the end here thanks to all of the mods that I've done. I also set up some nice tables on the upper area, a nice light, putting in some boxing around the fences just to give it some more bulk, and putting in the trapdoors so that the windows on the second floor were actually sealed. Once all of my supplies were done, I figured let's go get some more of those amber gems that I need for some of the end game gear that I want to get before this hundred days is over. There was a nearby shadow biome. I mean, not exactly nearby, but considering I have an elytra and rockets, everything's nearby with you're willing to spend a little bit of time. It was right on the edge of my render distance. I just barely noticed it on the map and the little bit of treasure that I was able to get from those chests there was definitely a nice bonus. No gems though, so I had to do a bit more exploring. And in heading north, I found something brand new. Ooh, what are you? A hard castle. Diamonds? Bones? Melons! Oh, that's... Wait. That's an arrow. If I can make an infinity book, I can, I can have a bow and arrow. So now that I was closer towards range combat, I did want to check out this dungeon in front of me. I broke one of the spawners, getting randomly teleported around by a big mouth enderman, so I didn't know what they actually spawned. I cleared the roof of the enemies that I know, starting to dig my way down, finding another spawner up in the roof here, and another in the middle of what looked like a very big portal, and it turns out it's wither skeletons. And the loot here was definitely not from the end. Apple. A golden apple! What? So I worked my way down to the lower levels, grabbing all of the blue concrete, as it is an unnatural block in this dimension, and continuing to find some really unique treasures in these chests. There's a lot here. There's potential. 
So I worked my way around through all of them, making sure to check every barrel, getting a whole lot of stuff that I would not have expected to have seen at all, finding a wither skeleton spawner that was blocked by a only too high door, which means wither skeletons can't walk through it. And I decided, oh, I could make the other side a too high door. This is Minecraft after all. So I made the very most basic of rudimentary wither skeleton farms. Considering it's powered by a spawner, it's a lot more efficient. I just really need to stand in place and it's a decent way to get some XP. But honestly, the most interesting part about this is the bone drops. I mean, the overall drops are definitely nice and getting things like a golden apple means I have some combat healing if I happen to go into another boss battle or something else unexpected. But being able to kill wither skeletons to be able to get bones for bone meal is infinitely faster than it being able to having to chop down a tree to be able to get leaves to be able to compost that, meaning that I'm a lot closer to being able to produce gunpowder at a much more industrial rate. And that wasn't the only thing that dropped. Well, okay. And I don't know, believe it or not, shortly after that first skull dropped, a second one also plonked down on the ground in front of me. I gotta say, I was not expecting wither skulls. Now, I don't know if there's any way to be able to get soul sand or if I'm gonna wanna farm for a third skull. Can I even fight the wither in this mod pack? That's wild, I honestly wild. But I flew over to a nearby end ship fighting a whole lot of shulkers, which is something that I definitely expected to fight a lot of in this mod pack. Grabbing all of the loot from the lower chests, picking up one more elytra for the road and tried to turn a bit of their floor into a crafting table. Oh, come on. Why would you do that? Whoever made this ship have dark oak double slabs instead of planks in the floor? I hate you. It's evil. I respect it, but I hate you. But once I was out of there, I flew over towards one of the sulfur biomes, spending a good chunk of the day just harvesting up more sulfur crystals, finding a more vanilla end biome nearby and grabbing a few coarse fruit along the way that once I got home, I could turn into a few crates of coarse fruit that I could use mainly for decoration, throwing down some of the ores and other things around the area using my fortune pick to be able to mine those up to be able to convert them into resources that I'm going to need very soon. And then you know what time it is. It's time for the Inventory Management Montage. Trader, where are you? There you are. You have anything I can buy? Ah! I genuinely don't know how to get a healing potion three to be able to trade with that trader, to be able to get opals, to be able to then get that opal sword. I have no idea, but I did trade in a whole bunch of ender pearls for some potions of slow falling, so I will fall slowly now. But now that I had a whole bunch of bone meal that I could get from the wither skeletons, which is just a few rockets away, I could actually invest some of that bone meal into growing wheat to be able to get some hay bales that I think I could turn into some really cool additional decorations for the base. Crafting up a whole bunch more gunpowder and then a whole bunch more rockets, thanks to all of my supplies. It was time to do some more work on some additional decoration, but also some next level infusions. First things first, I crafted myself up a few different purple pedestals and try saying that three times fast, looking to make myself some terminite plates that I could turn into some terminite armor. But to do that, I needed to upgrade my anvil to terminite as well, which required several blocks of the stuff, which required a whole bunch of smelting, which required converting a lot of my raw thalassium into ingots, which then meant that I needed to smelt that together with ender dust, which you get from smashing the ender shards with a hammer. But that actually required coal blocks to do, and I had no idea how to fuel that. What am I supposed to use as fuel? It's blocks? That's annoying. And all of that, all of that work got me one, one terminite ingot. This is gonna be so expensive. Thankfully, I had a few other ingots that I had collected from a few different end cities, as well as a couple rare blocks. Once I had all of that, I was able to take a singular block, 
Thankfully, it only cost one and upgrade my thalassium anvil into a terminite one, which once I went back down to the basement, realized that my thalassium hammer wouldn't count and I needed to make another block of it, which I could then turn into a terminite smithing hammer, which I could then finally turn terminite into forged plates, smashing up some more ender shards for more ender dust so I could smelt up more of the alloy, which I could then convert into a whole bunch of pieces of armor. Putting down the four pedestals, I threw down the helmet, legs, and boots respectively. Going into the next day and cleaning up after myself as I worked, finally being able to craft the chest plate to complete the set. This is leading towards what I want for endgame, but I'm not quite there yet. I need a whole bunch more of those amber crystals, which means I have to fly out to more of those shadow mansions to hopefully get them in the loot chests in the roof there. And along the way, I buzzed a mutant enderman. Ow. Oh no. I think I accidentally looked at the mutant. I went to check out an end city along my path, getting constantly pinned in the corner by endless shulker bullets, floating my way with my head on the ceiling, trying to fight my way through everything I could to be able to get the loot here. Once I kind of just gave up on that area, I flew my way over towards a nearby airship, heading into the lower level, dealing with a few much more manageable amount of shulkers, grabbing another ender chest, a bunch of iron, diamond, gold, all of the resources, valuables, and shinies that I love to collect in these days. I continued sailing out in a new direction, going into unexplored chunks, seeing more shadow biomes, unfortunately no more houses, but another one of those towers that had a chest plate and a saddle inside, I'll take that. And I'm basically doing a counterclockwise loop, expanding the area that I've rendered in all of the outer end islands to be able to better know everything that's around here. And in one of the end cities, I finally found what I was looking for. Got one. Having a name tag means that now I can finally go back and activate that Enderman farm that I had been creating. And it was one of the main reasons that I was out looking for loot in the first place. I want all of those amber gems, but being able to have experience and being able to then disenchant and re-enchant my armor is huge. Oh, I got two. Oh, and by the way, you know those shadowberry jellies that I cook for myself? I didn't know this at the time, but they give you night vision. And I play this late at night <laughs> in a pretty dark space, so I flashbanged myself with the additional brightness. I mean, this mod is already pretty bright in interesting ways, but that was just unexpected and very funny. I flew my way back over towards the Enderman farm, passing that, heading back towards home, where I could convert a lot of my resources down into blocks and then sort of consolidate things and prepare for what I believe is the end game of this adventure. I have a ton of almost everything. The thing I want to do is be thematically appropriate for this adventure when it comes to my armor. Just wearing basic diamonds while you get it from the end cities isn't fun. I want to make this fun. So I named one of the name tags, but then did a little bit of work at home, moving aside all of those chorus crates that I had made and planting down the melons that I had found at the end hard castle, which would allow me to have another source of bone meal and even just food. Being visited by a goblin trader and very much wishing I had more netherite. Oh my god, another tease. 24 netherite. I can't make that. Can I make that? No, I can make five. So with a really awesome weapon teased out in front of me, I flew away before I started getting ideas of looting all of the ancient debris in this dimension, heading over to one of the low islands near my Enderman farm, doing a whole bunch of stabbing to get a few stacks of pearls to theoretically spawn in the Endermite, which would enable my dreams. Once I had done enough of that, I flew over towards the Enderman farm, realizing that I had actually left a lot of my supplies <laughs> back at the base as far as the building supplies. So I crafted up some additional rails using the iron that I had. Then I used the iron blocks in my inventory, in the my like treasure box, 
as building blocks to get the chamber for the Endermite actually built up and ready to go. This way I could spawn the Endermite in and thankfully it only popped up after like two or three pearls. Okay, all right, G Greg, you're gonna help me. Greg here is going to help me enable infinite experience so that I can finally transfer all the enchantments from my diamond armor onto the terminite armor that I can upgrade to a crystalline version to have a very end appropriate armor set. I'm so excited to have this all work so well. Guardian down. Oh, are you kidding me? <sighs> Greg, no! Greg! You killed Greg! And then they left! Ah. That's genuinely upsetting. Throwing this all into the void. That too. All this work, and the mutant just messed it up. I have to go kill one. I have to go kill one as soon as humanly possible. The next one I see, I'm gonna go kill. <sighs> so, it's so upsetting. All right, let's let's go find one to kill. <laughs> I'm just upset now. I really wanted that to work. Now I definitely need to go kill one. But you know the rule I have for myself, if you're about to go get into a fight that potentially puts your world at risk, make sure that you have something to lose. So I spent some time putting down some additional decorations all around the house, including a bed, which is very dangerous because if I click that, I'll explode. I crafted up some of the wool that I had, dyeing that to make some nice red carpets, putting down some flower pots, brewing stands, and other decorations from the overworld here in the end. I crafted up a few hay bales thinking I can make some target dummies. That would be fun, but uh, yeah, that requires armor stands. So this end adventure has been one of how do I navigate everything with limited resources. That's kind of one of three flavors of 100 days that I do. I really like this kind of version because it makes me think outside the box and look into what's available in the mods and what I can really get at. But I know that sometimes this one's a little bit different than say the nether or something else like that. But with all of that done, thinking about these mods, I'm looking into the eternal crystals, which appear to be kind of the end game as far as the infusion pedestals for the better end mod. They require things like end crystals to craft up, and I'm looking into other things that I could make. They all require Aurora crystal shards, but unfortunately, the Infinity Book requires lapis, which I don't have a way to get. What I was working on, though, was smelting up all of that ancient debris that I had, finally cooking it all up into netherite scrap, and crafting some of that down into ingots, so that way, if I ever got a goblin trader, and eventually had enough of this, I could trade for that opal sword or something else really awesome. I also did some work up on the roof, finishing all of the walls of the endstone walls and the Laku Grove gates to make sure that was all set up, putting some other small decorations and details up on the roof of the building so that it finally looked complete. And with all of that done, it was time to sail out and get into a fight. I first stopped by at another one of those platforms that had Vex on it, fighting a big mouth Enderman, swinging my way around and picking up all of the ancient debris in here. Once that was done, I found another one of those large sphere structures that was generated up, this time sliced in a way that there was a decent amount of floor that could be stood on, which allowed me to fight a few of the Endermen that were around here and then let some of the evokers spawn, hopefully trying to get them to land on the ground where I could kill one of them. While I picked up the ancient debris from the floor, the only problem here being is that those evokers were spawning vex. Normal vex, mind you. Not just the ones holding end rods, the ones with like sharpness five swords. But I'm not gonna give up. I'm nothing if not stubborn. That's a problem. <laughs> That's... <sighs> Never mind, I learned when to give up. But I flew all the way back home, smelting up the ancient debris that I collected just from those two small dungeons, crafting up some additional gunpowder and rockets, making that into a few more netherite ingots, and now I have seven. It's not enough for the opal sword on its own, but it's enough that when you get the world download, you could potentially work your way up towards that. But I needed a few more ender pearls to be able to convert that to craft up some end crystals and some other things just to finish out and round out 
my gear. So I just flew over to one of the nearby islands. Considering that farm has been an absolute bust and a waste of time, I just set up a little lo-fi, low-ceiling area and tried making eye contact with all sorts of endermen. And once I felt like I had enough pearls, I flew over towards one of the brimstone biomes, mainly looking for a fight with a mutant enderman, but instead only found one of the very tall purple mouth axolotl looking ones and got into a little bit of a fight there. <laughs> this is fun. Ah, so many, so many. <laughs> They are so angry. Friendly Enderman to fight for me. That's fun. Let's fly away so they all despawn. Oh, that's a one off. Okay. Well, and the timing couldn't have been better because as I continued to fly, I saw a mutant Enderman. I was ready to have my new friend help me fight. The mutant enderman was teleporting everywhere, constantly blinding me, so I really didn't have a bead on it. It was also summoning these kind of phantasmal versions of endermen that would die in one hit, but swarmed by the dozens, which was a big problem, especially since they could get into the water. No! Gary too, no. Once I cleared all of them out, I was able to finally lock eyes on my target and get a few solid hits in. But one punch from the Enderman set me back only by a couple hearts. But the thing I'm most scared about is it's summoning more and more ads. Oh, no, oh God. Oh, no, God, oh. So with my pet Enderman dead, I wanted revenge. Cue the suffer city. Oh my god. Oh, that's some kind of ultimate attack. No, 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 come on, let me go, let me go, let me go, no, 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 let me go. Wait. Oh, they're dead. Yes. <laughs> We did it! Ooh, that was intense. So with the battle done, as we fought our way through, I flew back home, figuring out what I could craft with the treasure from that fight. My first thought was more end crystals, which I would need for the eternal crystals. I don't know exactly how much of those I would need, but I'm gonna craft up a couple of them at least. Also, now that I had all of the Aurora crystals and the gems necessary, I spent time infusing all of the Terminite armor to upgrade that to the crystalline variants. Now, each piece of this gives me a passive buff. The pants give me extra hearts. The helmet makes me immune to blindness. The boots give me walking speed. And when you have the full set on, you have constant regeneration. Absolutely always on health boosts. That is really huge. The only problem is without any sort of enchantments, the amount of damage that I'd be taking is extremely increased from all of my protection for near perfect rolled diamond armor. And as you've seen with all of these mobs, that's a two hit kill if I'm not careful. But to transfer the enchantments is insanely expensive. 25 levels for the most basic of just stripping the enchants off of the one helmet that has the least on it. But with only one level again, I figured I'd fly over to that little lo-fi area that I had set up the farm for, throw my elytra back on, fly over, and strip the enchantments off of the helmet. Thinking I'd lose the helmet, thankfully I retain it. Oh boy, is this expensive. That's all my levels. This disenchanting is a racket. I'm not going to lie. So this is mending. I need protection. Six armor, eight armor. Ah, oh, this is rough. 
So theoretically, given enough time, I could earn all the levels to be able to transfer all of my enchants from my diamond armor onto the crystalline variants. The only problem is I only have eight days left in this world and I'm not sure that that's possible. I do have just a book with protection four and unbreaking three, which I could throw onto the pants. They would definitely survive the next eight days. So I figured I only need seven levels for that. Let me head over back to that little lo-fi farm and just gain seven levels. What could possibly go wrong? What the heck was that? Oh, that's what that was. Oh, that was very, very close. <laughs> oh, my heart just went into my throat. I cannot believe I pulled that off. <laughs> oh, I need a second. Wow. Go me. That felt amazing. That was intense. Okay, maybe the wings stay on for now. So yeah, the Elytra probably is gonna stay on for the rest of this adventure as the mutant endermen are not quite happy with me having killed one of their kin. So instead, I headed over to the lake biome to the south of the house, being able to sit in water or in small little two by three chambers, running around grabbing the seven levels by killing a few endermen at a time. Most of my gear had mending, so that needed to get repaired first, so it took most of the day. But once I had these seven levels necessary, I flew back towards home and using my anvil, was able to throw protection four and then breaking three on the crystalline leggings, meaning I get my two extra hearts and a little bit of knockback resistance, and I'm halfway towards having a good crystalline armor set. Day 93, we're coming up on the end game of this entire adventure and I need to start prepping for the dragon fight. I've really only been surviving on the outer end islands. The dragon itself is way upgraded from what you see in a vanilla world, meaning that it is a proper boss fight, meaningful for the end of this challenge. I grabbed myself a whole bunch of chorus succulents, which are just sitting on the ground here. That's free food, but the ender ore is what I was really looking for as I could turn that into more ender dust and use that in enchanting and infusion. I also found these pink berries, which were another nice food boost, another really good accessible high saturation food that I could get. Unfortunately, it is also biome locked, which means that you can only grow it where it is. You can't really make a farm for it back at home. But I returned back home, making a big tower out of all of the ores that I had collected using my fortune pick to mine my way down and collect all of it. And then it was time to do a final bit of really exciting infusion. Right after making the first Eternal Crystal, I actually ran out of the Aurora Crystals, which is very easy. I just flew over to one of the crystalline biomes nearby with a fortune pick in hand, and in breaking just a few dozen blocks, well, well <laughs> that's a way to find a little. You know, I think I have just a couple now. I only really needed like a half a dozen, so having six stacks, yeah. Overkill is underrated, okay? I spent a little bit more time getting the remaining end crystals infused into their eternal crystal form. Once I had six of them, I stored off the rest of the Aurora crystals, did a little bit more farming around the base, and then just thought about what I'd do. If I could potentially get some more experience to siphon off the enchants from my diamond gear to the crystalline gear. And I thought fighting another obsidolith would potentially yield the experience needed to be able to really upgrade myself again. Wait, does this still have a question mark? <laughs> After dealing with my commitment issues, I went over to the lake nearby, harvesting up all of the lilies that had currently grown so I could make enough rockets to be able to go to the Obsidolith and back towards the central island, fighting a few endermen here and there before popping my way back home and setting my final round of resources to dry so that I could do a little bit more flying. And with everything collected and crafted, I thought the Obsidolith would take too long and I know how intensive the dragon fight is. So let's fly off towards the central island and get ready for the battle of my life. Oh boy, here we go. Oh 
boy. Oh, that's epic looking. I just made a whole tower. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Let's try this. Oh, no, that's even worse. <sighs> okay, that works. Oh, that's terrifying. That's a massive lightning attack. Okay. What do I do here? Is that a blaze? Oh my god. There's blazes. Okay, so there's a spot up here. I don't have a sword, so... Nope. Come on, dissipate. Are you kidding me? I missed a whole damage cycle because of that. With the dragon breath bombing the top of the tower, meaning that I skipped another damage cycle and then a crystal spawning in, it felt like everything was going to recover and heal and that just wasn't gonna work. Okay, here it comes. My God. Come on. There's got to be a way in there. Come on. Come on. There's another crystal. This is so dangerous. Come on. Come on, Jasmine, get in here. This would have been way easier with a bow. Oh my God, that's about to break. I only had a few berries to my name. My elytra had a whole 26 durability on it. It was time to go. I think I made the end dragon fight too hard. Oh my god, that was so close. The problem I think I have is that I don't have a bow. I can't deal with those crystals at range. I have to go up and punch them and, you know, they explode in my face. So this might not be possible given the restrictions I put on myself. I spent some time at my base just trying to figure out how can I make more arrows? How can I take down the dragon? Then I looked at the eternal crystals and thought, maybe there's another way. <sighs> what do I do? What do I do? There's one other shot. Okay. Oh, 
Oh my god! I, I didn't think it was gonna do anything. Oh, that's terrifying. Oh, portals. Why is it always portals? Okay, it turns off. And back on. Good. Good to know. Is it worth it? But no. I've used a portal at the end of 100 days for an easy way out of this challenge far too often. It's time to return back to the main island and finish this. Oh, it's back to full health? That's upsetting. I don't even know how I damaged it so much the first time. Oh, by breaking the crystals. Okay, 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 here we go. Oh my god, that's tons of damage. Come on, I got you now. Ow. Oh my god. <laughs> that hurt a lot. That hurt a lot, a lot. I see it. So very, very loud. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This could be it. Come on, come on. Oh my God, that was so close. Come on. Ow. This is not looking promising. Come on. Come on. Perch. This is so loud. Oh, they're recovering way too much health. Way too much health. No, I lost so much progress. There we go. <laughs> and an egg. With the dragon slain, I collected all of the experience from around the island, which would all come in very handy in transferring my enchants. I also put the work in to make sure to try to get the torch, which I had to make a slab to, in order to drop it on so that it would actually be available for my inventory. I flew my way home back through all of the different biomes, passing over right where I had started this 100 days adventure into the neon cactus surrounded castle that I had made for myself. With all of those levels, I was able to strip the enchants off of my boots and put them on my crystalline boots. Wow. <sighs> this is way too expensive. I hate it.
But with all of that done, I put down the egg, and then there was just one last idea to do. So I crafted up just a few more rockets and flew my way back over towards that eternal portal to see what was on the other side. Does it not work? Wait. Does it not work? Hold on. Let's go to another, let's do another portal. Oh, we're lagging. Five minutes later. Oh, we're lagging. <laughs> I lagged back, but the world didn't. So I have another dragon egg. You know what? This is awesome. Let's just put that right there. <laughs> I love, I love it when I get to break the game. Oh, wait. Oh, my pain. Okay. Let's re-enchant the shoes again. Oh, it's all sorts of screwed up. While my little travel backward in time had duplicated the dragon egg, it cost me my boots, but don't worry, I'll fix that for the world download. So now, trying this again, I threw the crystal into the portal, and with one of those large axolotl endermen running my way, I thought, once more, into the breach. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you want to join the amazing people that you see on screen, go hit up my Patreon at patreon.com slash Lagundo. There you can get the world download and early access into my new game mode, Extraction, which is launching very, very soon. Thank you so much. Take care of yourselves. Be good to each other. Goodbye.